Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the after party last night. I know I did. Um, yeah. So we have a wonderful panel today to talk again about Bitcoin. It's the, the Bitcoin party here at uh, Disrupt Berlin. Um, and we have amazing panelists to talk about it with. So I think the, the thing that I struggle with right now is that, that all, all sort of blockchain seems to be a matter of faith right now. What you believe in. Do you believe in Bitcoin? Do you believe in Ethereum? Is, is crypto a, a business or a religion right now? What, how do you all think about it? I think it's a religion. I think um, I certainly had an altar to Sas uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. And Vitalik has come along <laughs> and, you know, there's a few of us that think that Vitalik is the Einstein of our generation. He's really is that, um, that much of a leader. So, yes, I, I believe it is. And people are very emotionally attached to uh, whatever they're bag holding. So people that missed out on Bitcoin got into Ether um, and they generally are in, in, into that. Yeah. Yeah, Zoe? Guess, yeah, I guess every disruption is driven by some kind of belief, right? And, you know, the blockchain is a disruption. It's going to change our paradigms. It's going to change the world. And people need to believe it, right? And notice that stuff needs to change to uh, make it happen. So, yeah, it is a religion. But, of course, it's a big business as well, right? I it's, guess. Well, I mean, y'all certainly believe it. It's a religion worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Right? It is a religion <laughs> yeah. that, well, I mean, so is Dianetics, right? I mean, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so it, it depends on how you look at it. But, but you're both investors in, in that religion. How do you invest? Like, Keld, when you're, you're basically, you're, you're a publicly traded fund yeah. that then vets and invests in, That's right, in yeah. crypto. So, yeah, we're a public company on the next market, which is London Stock Exchange. Uh, we're there for the average Joe retail investor to invest. So it's for people who want to invest in crypto and blockchain, but don't want to commit into actual getting a, downloading a wallet, buying Bitcoin or Ether. Um, and we are, we're a paper share, so you can't hack it. And it's, you can wrap it up into your tax ISA, a bit boring, but you, can, <laughs> <laughs> you get tax-free gains uh, if you invest. So it's for the norms. It's like investing. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a way for norms to take a flyer yeah, yeah, exactly. or invest or uh, invest yeah. in the belief that is, yes. that is crypto. Yeah. Zoe, you are decidedly not for the norms, right? I mean, like the way that you're doing it is, is, is fairly yeah, arcane. Right. It took me like eight conversations with you to understand it. So can you explain a little bit about what you do? <laughs> it's not so difficult, actually. We are not... <laughs> Thanks. It just was a good part. <laughs> um, we are not a fund, right? right? We're more like a fundraising platform, and it's actually very, very simple. So the project is built for companies who not necessarily are, you know, blockchain native companies, projects that maybe don't have a native token, businesses that, you know, most of the businesses today are difficult to turn into these networks of protocols, right? right. But still, you know, we think that the ICO process, as, as it is right now, is a very, very efficient form of fundraising for companies, right? That, that's why there's such a run on it. So what we created is simply a uh, platform where you can take your equity, your share, your actual security, <laughs> um, turn it into the token, right, and offer it to the investors on that platform for fundraising, mm. right? So that's it. And, and you also have a token of your own, though, as well. We also have a token of our own. So yes, we are, um, you know, this fundraising platform, the platform is decentralized in the way it works that are, uh, you know, if you are a company and you put some shares on this platform for the investors to buy them, the moment these investors invest in these shares, buy these shares, they also get the token of our network as a reward on top. So the way that you think about it is that uh, it, it's, it's sort of a platform or, or a NASDAQ platform that every yeah. investor gets to own a piece of. Exactly. So as yeah. the platform increases exactly. in value, exactly. their, yeah. their value increases exactly. as well as yeah, holders yeah. of noise. Because I believe that it makes sense, right? It's coming back to the religion part. The centralization makes sense. Okay, yeah. let's, let's get to this religion part for a second. <laughs> now, um, Kel, you're pretty agnostic when it comes to what you will invest at, at, like if you are a believer you're a believer in blockchain as a whole you don't necessarily care whether it's bitcoin or ethereum or whatever yeah i mean so, yeah so I, I, as someone who's a bit removed from this because it, it tends to get very you, you know how many cryptocurrencies can dance on the head of a pin mm. when when you look at the differences between the two currencies like what seems to be the most the the most sort of interesting right now right. to you? And, and like, are there alternatives then to the sort of Bitcoin, Ethereum, binary, that, that, that yeah. binary world that, that people, most people seem to live in? Yeah, I think that uh, Ethereum brought the, the world of smart contracts into life. 
Uh, that's a paradigm shift from just a, a, a kind of store of value moving around the world. So that ignited a kind of pre-Cambrian explosion of services that created this sort of ICO, we hate the word, but uh, sort of a, a new crowdfunding mechanism. Um, it's kind, of, kind of spiritually, we're Ethereum because it brought this new world of, this, this new world computer that's got these services that are just transformational, uh, that's still being created and not live yet. Uh, it's got its own issues which are being resolved, but uh, they, they're still issues right now. So any kind of platform that's solving those issues is something, the things that we're looking at. Right. Uh, so we are investing in other blockchains uh, and expecting similar Ethereum style explosions on those, on those blockchains. What, what, what other blockchains seem most interesting to you? Well, I mean, we're looking at several, but one is called NEO, uh, which is a a currently fairly centralized, but it is going fully decentralized blockchain, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff that are interesting on it. I I'm not sort of shilling it, but it's uh, one we lo we're looking at. Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah I mean, I, I just think that having a discussion about what alternatives yeah. are out there. Yeah, no, it's, it's got, so you can code in any language, it's got identity built in on it, uh, and it's got some, it's got scalability solved. Right. So, you know, we love Ethereum, we're still investing on most of our stuff in that, but. Neo is one we're definitely looking at. And, and Zoe, what do you think of IOTA? Is that, is that, because I know that's another alternative platform. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole load of technical issues that have been purported to be around IOTA, so we just stayed clear of it. Okay, wow, all right. Zoe, you are, you're all in on Ether. You're, you're a, an well, Ethereum, you're a platform built on Ethereum, yeah? Yeah, so, well, yeah, our platform is built on Ethereum. I guess this is the, we just needed an ecosystem, you know, for smart contracts, and this is the one that's most advanced right now. It has its problems, of course, but, you know, there's simply nothing better at the moment, right? And by far, it's the most supported, the most developers, uh, the, the biggest developers community around it. Let, let's talk yeah. about the problems for a little bit, because, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it seems like, especially now, those problems are being exposed when you have 25% of Ethereum being held in crypto kitties. Right. Yeah. So like that, that how, has that affected the way that your company operates right now or what? Well, our, our site has been down this morning for a your while. Your site yeah. is down because of crypto kitties. <laughs> That's true. And this is the future. <laughs> it's the future of fundraising. Okay, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, okay, there we go. Yeah. Kel, what, what, do you have any, any take today. on that or like um, thoughts? Well, it's still being tested. You know, the scaling thing is still being tested. Uh, you know, the, a lot of these you know, when there's a big crowd sale, it slows the whole network down. So yes, the, the brightest people on the planet are working on it. So it's me, yeah. but even Christine yeah. Lagarde from IMF says that it's going to be solved. So I guess <laughs> if she believes in that, then right. it's a real religion. Right. Well, OK, so let, let's talk about the ICO process a little bit. And both of you are, are sort of curators, if you will, of, um, of, of offerings, token, token sales. What do you look for in a token sale? We look at traditional things like team traction technology. I mean, that's what we look at. Uh, we look at the crypto economics of the project, see if the economics stack out, how the token is actually crucial to the network. Uh, so, you know, we like to see a, a decent network organization. I call them network NORGs, network organizations that are, um, have got a, a, got a compelling service. Um, the, the token is essential in that, uh, and it brings an incentivization to people of the, the whole token. Uh, that can be utility, transactional, or voting. Uh, it can be any of those. Mm. Um, so we look for the team who are either proven entrepreneurs. I guess it's kind of traditional what, you know, right. the, TechCrunch crowd. Yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, you look for team, you look for talent, you look yeah, exactly, for yeah. some sort of traction on the product. Yeah, yeah. Zoe, are there any things that you would just redline and say, this is not appropriate to be a token sale yeah, and we're not going to look at any it? Any scams or anything like that, of course. But you yeah, know, but what, I, I yeah. mean, what, what makes a scam a scam? But right? you know, with us, it's maybe a little bit different because our platform is designed to support, you know, uh, ICOs, if you want to say it, or equity token offerings for companies that actually don't have a token. Right? So I don't know, let's say you're a hardware producer or a drone producer or something like that, and just a regular startup, and then you just want to use this method of fundraising, right? And then we simply, you know, we look at traditional startups, you know? Also, yeah. of course, the, also, of course, protocol models, but not only, right? So, yeah. so uh, but 
for now, everything that's being offered on Noi Fund or everything that's got a Noi is is a is a is tokenized, right? Like there is a token for all. Of well, it? yeah. I mean, the, the only tokenization point here is that if you have a share of your company, right, we simply make this share a token. Right. Okay. So you have a so the the, the person that buys that shares get the, sh the get the rights as if it was but a shareholder, right? That's it's it. an alternative to crowdfunding more than more than like a, well, a crypto can, base. Kind of. If you can call IPOs crowdfunding, which they are anyway. Well, I mean, you, yeah, you, can, like you can do a, you know, yeah. a, a, what the SEC has just had those, those, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. those yeah, new exactly. sort of lower scale exactly. crowdfunded yeah, it's IPOs a, for, mm -hmm. for small startups, right? That's right. right? That's right. So, so, you know, we put that on chain simply, right? Which makes the process cheaper and faster. And that's the whole point. What impact do you, you both see from the, um, the Flexcoin uh, sort of uh, decision that came out from the SEC yesterday where, yeah. where those guys just got walloped? Yeah. Um, but I think we'll obviously see more of that. I mean, you know, regulation is a bit of a boring subject, but it's absolutely going to be part of what's going forward. And that, you know, there's been a lot of uh, hack, hacks and scams that, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to make, bring people to account for that because you've got to do the, the trace through the blockchain. So, um, the, you know, the Flexcoin guys got nailed because they were posting on Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, it's probably vulnerabilities if you can kind of see where they so they're, so they're, they're, they're. I, I mean that's sort of a change in the definition of what marketing is right and I think that's something that that people need to be cautious of or cognizant of because basically if you post anything on Facebook now or Twitter about your ICO and it's a little shady you're gonna get popped or you have the potential to get popped uh, uh, well, you're not supposed to advertise to American investors, right? Right. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, but I think, you know, 2017 was the year where lawyers made a lot of money on, you know, writing opinions why something is maybe not a security, right? And this year is going to be the year of, you know, lawyers making money on, uh, you know, helping people get licenses. Right. So, ha yeah. Has, has the heat come off of, of the, the, the ICO market? sufficiently is it rationalized so one of the things that we were hearing yesterday is that you know three months ago the market looked like x and now it looks like y uh you know you're not seeing any more 200 million dollar crypto uh icos you're you're seeing more rational rational i use that in quotes mainly uh 25 million 10 million five million dollar uh yeah. coin offerings um why would a company I, I, so what what do you think is the benefit of using the ICO platform versus going the traditional fundraising route oh, for, for venture? I could talk about it for a very long time. Yes. Well, let's <laughs> talk about it for a very long time. So I guess the main issue is today that VC market is extremely fragmented, right? If you want to raise money, even if you have your network, you still need to have that pitch deck and step by step to everybody need to go to this manually. It takes you six months. It takes you minimum six months, right? Um, and, you know, maybe then someone doesn't want to work with somebody, the syndicate doesn't want to be formed or whatever, you know, it's a ex very exhausting process, right? Um, there is, of course, the liquidity is a problem later. Right. There is the secondary market simply does not exist in VC industry. I mean, it's very, very rare, uh, which is a problem problem for founders, VCs, LPs, everybody, right? Everybody involved. Um, and you know, if you imagine that, uh, that, you know, what we would build, what we would turn the ICO process into, which is like, you know, a light version of IPO, right? The version of IPOs that is, you know, targeted to tech investors, product-oriented investors. Crypto communities, the, these are early adopters, right? These are great investors for early stage companies, right? This is a great DNA. Um, if you could, you know, create something like that, and this is somehow regulated, that you know all this, uh, you know, drama or regulation is away, then it would be great. On top, uh, you know, blockchain takes care as a system, right, about more or less, you know, majority of the cost that is now related to doing an IPO, which is the clearance and the ownership transfer. Right. Yeah. I think that the, the key thing is a token is incentivizes a person in the network to use the service and get behind it and. It's basically your marketing, part of your marketing, uh, but they're also testing the product. Yeah. Um, so you've got a, you know, versus traditional funding, as, as I said, you've got um, a kind of fr a frictionless way to raise some funds, plus you've got a kind of fanatic amount of users that are using the tokens, that are <laughs> going around running, grabbing Again, people saying, the, have the you heard about this? The sort of religious language, com the language of <laughs> religion yeah. comes yeah. back into the picture. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's several, crypto services now where people uh, continuously talk about the, the you know, they're, they're so fanatic about them that they'll just... You know who else does that though? Mary Kay. 
the right. cosmetics company. Herbalife. Or Ponzi schemes. <laughs> like, those are also things that, that are yeah. very, you know, sort of built on, on everyone buying in and, stuff, and, yeah. paying yeah, and paying out and paying up. You're right. Pyramid marketing is a thing. Um, I, I think it's, it's more of a fanaticism for the technology. I think right. people have got into the, they've been blown away by this decentralization approach that was caused by the banking crisis of 2008, where centralized control of money caused all the problems and Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin from that, that, that problem. And that, that's basically been, you know, Vitalik and Ethereum have taken that further. And that's right. just a decentralized, decentralizing wave that started at torrenting and all those kind of download sites. Um, so it, it, it's, it's basically it's a fanaticism from the, from the tech. You, you're kind of creating a network, they're investing versus VC funders who, you know, but they're, they're pretty arrogant, you know, they won't give you, they won't reply to your emails. Well, you were, you were, They've you got disproportional company, right? term, you know, if they, yeah. if they invest 5%, they want like crazy terms, right. Right. and the founders get screwed, so, you know, what's, what, you know, what's to like about that model? Right, right? no, for sure. I, well, I mean, is there any value in VC, I guess, is the, the no. question. No, Th there's value in strategic collaboration of networks yeah. of small, organized people that are passionate about the technology, which we're one of those companies. But VCs have, the, uh, have um, a sort of, um, a, sort of uh, a different mindset, yeah. I'd say, into their participation in a project. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's like investing in open source software is, is uh, a mind shift. Yeah, I, I, well, one of the things that we, I talked about yesterday with Kavita from Consensus Ventures, um, when, when they were, she was talking about their, their first four investments, but, but she said that you know, they're investing and they've got a lock-in period for somewhere around three to six months, and that, that's their time frame. And I, I didn't get a chance to, to sort of investigate that a little bit, but one of my thoughts was when you're an early stage company and you're looking for investors, one of the things you're looking for is actually also guidance and support and a network that you can access. And to cut someone off after six months as a company, as an early stage company, seems, seems a little premature to me. And I don't mean to cast dispersion, she's not here, we'll talk later, but, but I, I mean, does that seem, as a startup company, as a former founder, would you, as both of you former founders, is, does six months seem like an adequate time to, yeah, be, to get engagement from an investor and get that, that kind of? No, I think there needs to be some kind of balance between, you know, this day trading that we're seeing, you know, in the in the tokens right now, right, and exchanges and the, you know, completely not non-existing secondary market in VC, right? So, you know, I think that, you know, three months is maybe too short, but six months, uh, six years, I'm sorry. Waiting six for years the, is too long. Yeah, it's too long, right? Well, so does all of this problem get solved then if the VCs could just come up with a better secondary marketplace? I mean, if you well, look at, at one of the guys who's in, in um, crypto now, He's the former founder of Second Market, right? Yeah, like, no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, you, but you still can't sell many shares on that, you know, so that's a problem. But I think to come back to the investor point of view, that there's so many different moving parts in running a blockchain company, from the token to the crypto economics to the, the crowd sale. Yeah. Actually, treasury management is a big issue. So we've invested in a company called Vault to hold uh, lots of crypto. Um, and that is really a key part of, uh, another key part that, most traditional technology companies don't have to deal with. It's like you've got these crazy movements in, in a key uh, asset you've got. Th there's no knowledge, not much knowledge in, in the company. Suddenly you have to be an expert in you know, trading different, or whole, you know, how to do currency uh, sh uh, kind of movements. So you know, what we like to do is, uh, is, is from, from genuinely from our heart, try and support them as long as possible. Yeah. Um, so, it's very much of a shifting sand. Treasury management, when you've raised 20, 30 million and you've got it in a crypto, you know, what do you do at that point? These are really scary questions. Right. Well, and also even if you raise it in crypto, it's, it's not really liquid, right? Like you, it's hard to, to, to get that cash out or yeah. the value yeah, out. Yeah, you, out. yeah you, you, well, you can just, you can cash it out, but you've got to do either, you've got to be patient on exchanges right. or do big over the counter trades. So, but VCs are moving and you know, are interested in this market massively as well, yeah. right? I mean, on our platform, we have 20 plus business angels and VCs, right? That are all interested in investing in those equity tokens together with the crowd, right? right? So, uh, so well, you know, but I guess VCs they get are, it. you know, there's a herd mentality to VC. They'll go wherever everyone else is going. They'll be like, oh, what? People are looking that way? Let's, let's go over there. <laughs> well, that's good for us. I guess. Well, I mean, I, I for guess the that's blockchain good for as a whole. We, we could talk about, literally, we could talk about this for hours. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it's a fascinating subject and it's an incredible, incredible 
reasonable time to be in the market. Unfortunately, we have three, two, one. We have one second left. Sadly, we're over time. But uh, so I'm going to have to wrap it up. But thank you for listening and thank you all for participating. It's been a wonderful well, panel. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.